Hello there. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of fractional calculus. In some previous videos ago, we derived what we called the grunewald letnikov derivative representation for the fractional derivative operator d of order alpha with terminal points a and x of some function of x, which is defined to be equal to the limit of this series here, which has h, gamma, uh, and the terminal points of interest. Uh, here h is pretty much like our partition length and x minus a over n is another way of looking at that expression. So again this is what we call the grunewald letnikov derivative. So similarly we derived a, uh, another form uh, that considers negative values of alpha. So we saw that the fractional derivative with terminal points a and x of negative alpha of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of h to the power alpha, so it's almost like the reciprocal of the sum from l is equal to zero to infinity of gamma alpha plus l divided by L factorial times gamma alpha times F of X minus L over N times X minus A. So this pretty much allows us to consider the fractional derivative uh, for negative orders. So in this video we're going to bring together the ideas of differentiation and integration starting with this result that we have proved in the previous videos. All right, so what we're going to begin by doing is considering some values of alpha so that we can sort of get some uh, connection to the integral operator that we know from uh, standard calculus. So we're going to consider alpha to be equal to one in this identity above. So hopefully we can show that the negative first derivative is pretty much like uh, an integral of some sort. So when this is true, we have dAx to the negative first of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of h to the first times the sum from l is equal to zero to n of gamma one plus l all over l factorial times gamma of one times f of x minus l over n um, but we can actually write this as LH if we want to. So what do we have here? So of course H to the first is just H. Um, also gamma of one plus L is the same as L factorial by the connection between uh, factorial and gamma function. And this is true since L is a natural number since this is the index of the summation. So if that is the case, that means gamma one plus L and L factorial cancel. We also know that gamma one is equal to zero factorial, which is equal to one by definition. Uh, so that's equal to one as well. So that means we have that the negative first derivative of F with terminal points AX is just equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of the sum from L is equal to zero to M of f of x minus l h times h. So what exactly is this? So this right hand side should look familiar. This is practically just a Riemann sum. So why do we say that this is a Riemann sum? So this h is pretty much like x minus a minus zero all over uh, n. So this is pretty much our uh, our b that we usually have in our integral and this is usually our a that we usually have in our integral. So this whole entire h term is practically like our delta x in the traditional Riemann sum representation. So uh, once we notice that then we can say that a dx of negative first of f 
is just equal to, once we apply the limit uh, to this uh, sum or series, we have this is the equal to the integral from 0 to x minus a of f of x minus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this LHT. So I'm going to call that T and then DT. Um, so this is going to be my beginning statement. Now I'm going to perform a U substitution on this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let U be equal to X minus T. Now keep in mind that X is a constant with respect to the integral since it's a integral of T. So that means DU is going to be equal to minus 1 times DT. So that means DT is equal to minus DU. We can also look at our limits of integration as well. So when U or when T is equal to 0, U is equal to X. And when T is equal to X minus A, U is equal to X minus x minus a, which is just equal to a. So the integral from 0 to x minus a turns in, into the integral from x to a. So we have the negative first derivative of f is equal to the integral from x to a of f of u times negative du. We can take this negative and reverse our limits of integration from x to a to a to x. So therefore, we can say that the negative first derivative of f with terminal points a and x is just precisely equal to the integral from a to x. And we can change this uh, variable of integration since that's just a dummy variable. We can just say that this is equal to f of t dt. So this is the identity for the negative first derivative, which is pretty cool, right? So we've proven that the negative first derivative at least is the first integral of a function. So now we're going to continue with this uh, analysis. So now we're going to consider alpha is equal to 2. Using the same definition, what do we get? So we have that d with terminal points ax of minus 2 of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of h squared times the sum from l is equal to 0 to n of gamma of l plus 2 all over l factorial times gamma of 2 times f of x minus l h. So we're going to use our connection between factorials and things. And also notice that gamma of 2 is equal to 2. And this expression up here is just L plus 1 factorial. So remember that L plus 1 factorial all over L factorial is just going to be equal to L plus 1. So we can rewrite this instead as the following. So dAx of negative 2 of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of h squared times the sum from l is equal to 0 to n. So that's going to be equal to l plus 1. So l plus 1 all over 2 times f of x minus l h. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a re-indexing re of my variables because when I plug in 0, I get 1. When I plug in 1, I get 2. When I plug in 2, I get 3. So I'm going to shift everything up by 1. So I have the dAx of negative 2 of f is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of h squared times the sum from l is equal to 1 to m plus 1 of L over 2 times F of X minus L H. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this H squared. I'm also going to factor out my 1 half as well. So I have that A DX of negative 2 of F. It's going to be equal to 1 half times 
the limit, as n goes to infinity, of h. Actually, I'm just going to call this the sum from l is equal to 1 to m plus 1 of lh times f of x minus lh times h. So I've put one h next to my l in front of my f of x term, and I've put the other h at the end. So this is pretty much going to be my delta x, and this is pretty much going to be my function uh, f. So observing that this right-hand side is a Riemann sum as n goes to infinity, I can make the following claim. So a dx of negative 2 of f is going to be equal to 1 over 2 times the integral. So the limits are going to still be the same, so 0 to x minus a. So lh again is going to be my t term. So we have this is going to be equal to t times f of x minus t dt. And I'm going to perform the same substitution of u to be x minus t. So therefore, I get that a dx of minus 2 of f is going to be equal to 1 half times the integral from a to x of x minus t. So x minus t. It's in terms of u, but of course we can switch back to t times f of t dt. So that is my identity for the second derivative. So let's consider the third. So similarly, for alpha is equal to 3. So what do you think we're going to have? So one can find that dAx of minus 3 is going to be equal to, let's see, where did this 2 come from? I'm curious now. Where did I say that that was equal to 2? Oh, shame on me. No, it's not. So gamma 2, this is equal to 1. Right? That's equal to 1. That's 1. So I'll write that as 1 over 1. So 1 over 1. Let's correct that. That's a, that's a scary mistake, right? Okay, cool. All right, so when we do it again, uh, what we're actually going to get uh, when we perform the same exact tricks. So the bottom gamma, which is pretty much why I realized this, this is going to turn into gamma of 3 on my next iteration, which is going to be the same as 2 factorial. So 2 factorial is going to be on the bottom of my next relationship. So 1 over 2 factorial times the integral from a to x. And the number in front of my f term is going to have a power that's equal to the same factorial number. So this is going to be equal to x minus t to the power of 2 times f of t dt. And we consider this again for 4 if we want to. So dAx of minus 4 is going to be equal to 1 over 3 factorial times the integral from a to x of x minus t cubed f of t dt. And we can extend this to any natural number order. So in general, a dx of minus k plus 1 of f is going to be equal to 1 over k factorial times the integral from a to x of x minus t to the k f of t dt. So this is my identity for my recursive um, my recursive integral. Uh, some people refer to this as the Cauchy integral representation. So Cauchy integral representation. But it's not necessarily a fractional order. Um, so what we can do is we can extend k plus 1 uh, to gamma to sort of delete the discrete nature of the factorial function because that's pretty much the only limitation. Um, so we have the following uh, real key result. So d of ax of minus alpha of f is just equal to 1 divided by gamma alpha times the integral from a to x 
of x minus t to the alpha minus 1 times f of t dt. So this is my fractional integral formula, which of course comes from the GL derivative. So this is like the grunewald letnikov fractional integral uh, definition, if you may. Um, so pretty much in this video, we have proven the connection between derivatives and integrals. Pretty much integrals are just inverse derivatives. So the negative second derivative is pretty much just the second integral. And the negative third integral is pretty much just like the third derivative. Uh, in the upcoming videos, we'll establish some properties associated to these definitions as well, as well, because this representation is actually a lot more useful in other gathering properties compared to the traditional uh, series representation of the Grunewald-Letnikov derivative.